Okay guys, we've covered our grips. Now we're ready to get into mechanics. Now what we've done with mechanics is we've broken it down into five sections or links. Okay, we like to call our mechanics the five links of the chain. Now why do we call it that? Well, just like the links of a chain, if one of those links breaks down, it can affect the rest of the chain. Now the five links that we broke them down into is one, we're gonna talk about our feet. We're gonna talk about balance. We're gonna talk about our power position. We're gonna talk about rotation. And finally, our follow through. Now the first thing I'm gonna talk about now is our feet. And what we wanna do is we wanna make sure we get all you guys with your feet on the mound the right way. And the first thing we're gonna do is make sure that you get your heel on the rubber and your toes on the dirt, okay? Now, a lot of different theories about where we should start out on, so as far as which side should we start out on the rubber. On the left side for left-handers or should right-handers start on the right side? Our theory is we wanna make sure you're in a comfortable position to throw strikes. Now, are there advantages for a right-hander to throw over here and a left-hander to throw over here? Yeah, but there are a little bit more advanced concepts and you know, really we're gonna wait until you get into a higher level of ball before we start talking about stuff like that. Right now, we just want to make sure we get you on the mound nice and comfortable and get you in a good setup. Now, the first thing we're going to do when we start our full windup is we got to take a step. And we want to make sure that step is a short step, okay, and a quiet step. We don't want to get too violent and get too far back. If I get too far back, where's my weight going? Towards second base. I want to make sure I'm generating all my energy towards home plate. So how do I do that? Well, one, I can make sure that my head stays above my pivot foot. If I think about my head staying above my pivot foot, this step back isn't going to go too far. Okay, it's going to be nice and comfortable. Okay, and we got to also watch out that terminology right there. We tell pitchers to take a step back. A lot of times they take a step straight back. And if I do that and I go to make my next move, which is my pivot, do I look comfortable right now? I don't feel very comfortable. Okay, so you got to make sure that one, the step back is actually a step on an angle a 45 degree angle, or some guys like to go to the side. And what that does, helps us pivot all the way. We gotta make sure we pivot right alongside the rubber. All right, another advantage, okay, of having our heel on the rubber and our toes facing forward is, how many of you guys have pitched on pitching mounds where there's been a big hole in front of the rubber? I'm sure all of you have. It's not like these mounds that are nice and manicured, okay? If you start out here, Okay, and take a step back. One, we're further away than where we'd like to be, but when I go to make my next move and make my pivot, now I gotta pick my foot up off the mound and take a step. And if there's a four inch hole in front of that rubber, boom, I'm making a big drop, okay? And that big drop is enough to mess up the rest of the links or the rest of your mechanics, okay? And a lot of times you'll have a day out there where you're struggling Okay, and everybody's yelling out instructions, and all it is is a simple move like this. And that's why we concentrate on the feet first before we move forward. We get right here, make a nice pivot, and that sets us up for the next link. Okay, hold it, hold it right there for a second. Do you see where uh, Habes had uh, the ball in his glove? That's one important thing that I'd like to uh, have you guys make note of. From a hitter's perspective, um, if you don't have the ball in your glove and it's off to your side, you are revealing the grip on the baseball what you might throw to the plate. So I would recommend that you would start with your ball in the glove. Now some pitchers, when they take a short step back, the glove will stay there, like Mike Messina. Other pitchers, uh, like Boomer Wells, glove actually comes above his head. Whatever you're comfortable with and whatever you feel works for you, both of those are particularly right. But the important thing is, get, get the ball, conceal your grip in the glove so the hitter does not have an advantage. And, again, and remember, when you take that first step back, the 45 degree step back, make it a small step, not a real violent step, okay? Okay, thanks, Cal. Okay, like we said, we got here, we, we've taken care of our feet, we made a nice step back, we got a good pivot, now we're ready to get into our balance position. Okay, when we get into our balance, we wanna make sure we get one, when we bring that leg up, we wanna make sure we have good, nice control of that lead leg. All right, we don't wanna get here again, once again, get too violent, all right? And when we get into our balance, okay, we're gonna be slightly closed here. Okay, we don't wanna get too far open, all right, or too far closed. Right about here, nice and comfortable. You see some pitchers with their hands still, some pitchers with their hands above their head. Well, at the balance point, you'll see some guys with low leg kicks, some guys with high leg kicks. 
Some guys will be like this, okay? Again, there's no right or wrong. It's one, we wanna make sure we have that common denominator, which is what? Balance. We wanna to get to this balance point, all right? What, what we're doing here is we're generating energy, okay? We're generating momentum, we're loading up here. And if we load up, now we can start, start our drive towards the plate. Let me check out a little bit of balance right here. Juan, come on up here. Let me see your first two lengths of the chain, which is the feet and the balance. Let's see how Juan does. Stay there all day, couldn't you? Let me have that ball back, Juan. Nice job. Nick, come on up here. See what the big lefty can do. Very good. That is good. I'll take that back. All right, I think we have the balance, Habes. All right. Take us into the power position. Very good. Well, as you can see with those two guys, they kind of had high gloves, okay? Which is very good. And what I liked about both of them, they had their eyes on the target, okay, when you're going towards the plate. One thing we're gonna make sure when we get into that balance position, that our eyes are on the catcher, okay? Again, always thinking about throwing strikes, eyes on the target. Now, when we get into our balance, our next link, okay, our link three, is gonna be our power position. This is where we separate. When I look back here is one, I want to see how you guys are taking that ball out of the glove. One, we want to make sure that that hand is above the ball when we take it out. Okay, if our hand is above the ball, it's going to help us create arm action right here. If our hand comes out underneath the ball, then we kind of look like this. And we've all seen those guys, they kind of look like a pitching machine. It's because their hands are underneath the ball, but if we get, take that ball out with our hand above the ball, Boom, we've got that nice arm action, we're creating that torque, okay? Another point is when we take that ball out of the glove, we wanna make sure we get it out and up. Don't wanna to get too lazy behind here. Get it out and up so we get here on time and put ourselves in a position to throw what? Strikes, okay? The next point of the power position is we wanna make sure that we're utilizing this front side, okay? Not only in pitching, throwing a baseball period, whether you're playing shortstop outfield, when we throw a baseball, we gotta get this front side involved. It's gonna give us two things. One, direction. It's gonna help us, again, put us in a better position to throw strikes. And two, it helps us generate torque. All right, and when we generate torque, that gets us in our, into our next link, which is rotation. Now we're rotating, we're generating all this energy. All right, and when I look for a rotation is one, I wanna make sure that we got good posture, my feet are lined up, I got my toe pointing, pointing towards home plate, my arm is in and out, okay? Now whether you're over the top or three quarter, does my elbow move much? No, it's still slightly above my shoulder. And if my elbow is above my shoulder and my hand's up here, it's gonna give me what? It's gonna give me leverage. So I'm going downhill towards the plate, all right? And through all this, I'm creating all this momentum. Okay, all this momentum, I got power, I'm generating power position, I'm generating rotation. Now I have my follow through. And you'll see all different types of follow throughs. Some pitchers will finish up perfect facing the hitter. Some guys will, right handers will finish down the first baseline. Some left handers will finish down the third baseline. Okay, is there a right or wrong way? Well, again, when you're talking textbook, you'd like to finish up facing the hitter. Okay, but if you're doing those three things, we're throwing strikes, okay, We'll, we got good movement and we have good velocity, we're not gonna change it. We're not gonna change it. We just wanna make sure you're generating momentum, you have a good strong follow through, and we're attacking the hitters. Okay, we finished mechanics, now we're gonna work on some drills.